All right, welcome to day two at AUSA. I'm Aaron Mehta, Editor-in-Chief of Breaking Defense. This is Andrew Everson, he's our Armory Reporter. We're gonna break down a couple of the big stories out of today. Andrew, let's start with a little bit of helicopter news. Uh, the Army's been working towards giving an award on the FLRAA contract, future helicopter for the Army. A lot of expectations that uh, either at the show or shortly after the show, we might actually get some word on that. Some cold water on that today. Yeah, so the Army's looking to replace the Black Hawk fleet in the future with the future long-range assault aircraft. Um, it's one of their top modernization priorities, and for the last several months, the Army senior leaders have been signaling that there would be an award either in September, that it's quickly shifted this summer to October, and then today Army Chief of Staff James McConville said that the award will be coming in coming months. And so now the timeline is a little bit more unclear as to when that award will come. Yeah, a couple of months. Technically, it does include the rest of this month, but I mean, the sense from everyone that's, is that's a good point. We're, we're talking about it's going to be a bit still. That's to go. correct. The two competitors, Bell and Sikorsky, will continue to have to wait to see who will win that award. So, another thing that kind of happened today, big thing that happened today, is uh, a new doctrinal document from the Army came out. Um, it's, it's a big thing, it's kind of a big cheeseburger of a paper. We have a great write up in detail on our website about it. But can you walk through a little bit about the news out of this document? Yeah, so the Army today formally released its multi-domain operations doctrine. They've been talking about it and working on it for several years now. Um, it's incorporated into exercises and experiments as commanders learn how it is or how to do it. Um, but it's the biggest um, doctrinal update the Army has had since the 1980s. And it's really laying out how the Army expects to fight across the five warfighting domains in, in coming decades and will really define how the Army fights on the battlefield moving forward. MDO is one of those things that we hear a lot about, you read about it, and it's kind of confusing. You actually got a little bit of a hands-on demonstration with us, right? Yeah, so today the Combined Arms Center had a demo for reporters with Microsoft HoloLens headsets, had an augmented reality demonstration uh, on what MDO looks like. So you put on the headsets, you saw this weird little cube that had uh, ships in a port, tanks on a battlefield, um, command posts way in the, in the back, satellites up in space, and really it demonstrated how all those things are connected uh, on the future battlefield as the Army envisions it. So, maybe not a surprise, but the question of Ukraine, the lessons from Ukraine, is something that we're hearing a lot about throughout the show uh, in terms of what the Army's maybe learned from it. Uh, you had a really good interview with General James Conville about that. That's up on the site as well but also what other countries are looking to the U.S. to help teach them how to deal with this. Well, this came up today in an event, right? Yeah, we have a great story on breaking defense today about how um, the Army Special Operations Commander was saying that he's actually had an uptick in requests from countries in both Europe and the Indo-Pacific to teach or to teach these partner nations more about how to do effective um, information warfare uh, and resistance campaigns inside their own countries, um, meaning uh, how these training these partner countries on how to respond if their country is invaded. Right, so obviously a lot of the preparation that we hear from militaries is let's keep the enemy out. I think it seems like what we're kind of getting from Ukraine is you've got to plan for what happens if the enemy gets in and then how to deal with that. Exactly, that's exactly what these countries are looking for help from the U.S. Army's special operators. All right, so for more on that or many other stories, please go to breakingdefense.com. You can read our coverage there. I'm Aaron Mehta. This is Andrew Everson. We'll be back tomorrow, wrap up day three of the AUSA conference. Thanks for watching.